Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited that you're all here to be part of this great event. So a couple of things. If you all want to come into the store, anything we have today is free. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, it's April Fool's Day. <laughs> My thanks to the governor's office for inviting us to host this very important event for small business. A little bit about us. My business, Bond Memories, has been here for 32 years. The surrounding areas of Medford, Marlton, Shemong, are all our wonderful customers. So we are open seven days a week until March 16th, when the pandemic sadly hit us all. So we closed. We were non-essential. I went home and watched TV. Repeatedly, I was happy to see Andy Kim and his commercials. <laughs> I, was, I was thrilled to watch Netflix. But anyway, it was very difficult for, and challenging for us here. As we were non-essential, we didn't open until June. And we missed our second busiest time of the year. We applied for and received two grants from the New Jersey Economic Development Authority and are so grateful for it. I can't express the importance of these two grants as the economic impact of the pandemic still continues. That money enabled us to keep our staff and to be able to pay bills that continue to come in. So for us, that money was a godsend. We are so, so grateful. So with gratitude from my fond memories team and all the efforts that all of you have made to keep small business in business, I say thank you, and in addition, I need to thank the governor for his leadership with the vaccine. That, to me, is the most important. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce our governor, Bill Murphy. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Um, I'm going to take my mask off while I speak, but um, I was just inside enjoying um, fond memories i want to give joanne a shout out the joanne dematio let's give her and her team a big round of applause um her number one is it engraver or embroider is tom embroider or tom was with us uh tom thank you i bought a small beach bag for my wife and one for my daughter but please folks don't tell them it'll be a surprise i hope that perhaps they're watching uh, but fond memories is a is a, a great example of uh, the backbone of our economy around this state it is the small businesses that employ 60 percent of uh, the folks who have a job in our state and it's a great uh, example of it so the store has been a cornerstone you said for 32 years here in medford um, and i hope the signing of the law uh, that i will sign in a few minutes and the positive impact that it will have on small business owners up and down the state will itself become a fond memory for years to come so uh, I am incredibly honored today to be joined by the aforementioned congressman Andy Kim Andy great to have you um, state senator Don Adiego Don great to have you with us and by the way Don is not just here as a senator she is the sponsor of this bill in the Senate so it, you're here in a big reason uh, the New Jersey uh, uh, Economic Development Authority chief executive officer uh, Tim Sullivan uh, and where's Charlie Breslin Charlie where are you Charlie nice to see you uh, Charlie is uh, you own uh, that, that I bet you that took you by surprise uh, <laughs> you went to Tufts and you, you had a minor in German I noticed these things uh, you're owner of Howard Charles and you're also here representing the Main Street Alliance so great to have you with us and we'll we'll hear from each of them soon i also want to acknowledge a, a terrific friend and great leader where's dan dan o'connell here who was burlington county commissioner in fact the deputy director of the burlington county uh, commissioners i have not seen chuck watson is chuck is, i don't think was able to make it but i want to give an absentia a shout out for mayor uh chuck watson and we've also got our head of all policy uh in our government with us dr zakia smith ellis who is by the way among other things a medford resident uh, so before we talk about this bill and I won't talk long Andy you got to work on the weather my friend please um, COVID is still with us so just to say because this is the only sort of public uh, event we're having today 4,699 new positive cases 
with the heaviest of hearts, 30 more confirmed losses of life. 2,292 people in our hospitals. That's down a little bit from yesterday. That's a good thing. Uh, 437 of whom are in the intensive care unit. That's also down a hair. And 237 of them are on vents. 298 people walked into a hospital yesterday with COVID, but the good news is 340 live patients walked out. And we need more days like that with more people leaving than coming. So to the topic of uh, why we're here, President Biden has become fond of saying help is on the way. Well, alongside this group here today, we can say definitively help is here. Over the past 13 months, the pandemic has turned our state practically upside down from its effects on our overall public health, as I just mentioned, to its impact, for instance, on our educational communities, and of course, uh, to the crushing blow that it has leveled against our economy, and especially, as Joanne highlighted in her own case, uh, against the smallest of our small businesses. Through Tim and his team at the EDA, we have stood up grant programs that have provided more than 35,000 grants to nearly 29,000 Main Street small businesses with five or fewer employees. That's a total of $137 million. We also created, we also, I'm fishing for applause here, we also created the Small and Micro Business PPE Access Program. This has been a game changer to give small business owners the ability to purchase vital personal protective equipment for themselves, for their employees and their customers at discounts of up to 70%. And this has saved more than 10,000 small businesses, more than $9 million collectively. These have been truly business-saving and dream-saving partnerships, including with Joanne and Fond Memories, not once but twice uh, in terms of the grants. Um, these partnerships have allowed businesses statewide to pay their rent or mortgages, to stay current on their utilities, to move their commercial presences online, to continue serving their customers, and to keep their employees on their payrolls. We set these programs up on an emergency basis to ensure that the federal relief we received went right to small businesses who needed it the most. And today, through our partnership with the legislature, and Don, again, I thank you, and through the work of uh, the senator and her colleagues, we are writing this commitment into state law. Assembly sponsors, to give them a shout out in absentia, I believe are Roy Fryman and Gordon Johnson. So they're not with us, but I want to give them a shout out. The $25 million we are committing to providing today will help many thousands of small businesses. When people think of small business, they think of places just like this. They think of the stores along Main Street that are owned by their neighbors and friends, which cater to the needs of the community and that hire from within the community if they're big enough to hire at all. And these aren't nameless, faceless corporations. These are not monolithic institutions. These are the names and faces that breathe life into a town and turn it into a community. Names like fond memories, frankly, Joanne, a name like yours. We know that these funds are needed now by our small businesses, and we know that more is needed beyond this to ensure that our main streets remain healthy and viable as we look to recovery from the pandemic. And we will be ready to assist them in any way possible. I'm proud that through our budget investments that we propose, we will put a total of $200 million in direct grants, loans, loan guarantees, and other tools to work for countless Main Street small businesses. We have also worked to ensure that the federal Paycheck Protection Program support our small businesses received would be exempt from all state taxes and that the expenses those funds went to pay would further be tax deductible. Together with today's actions, New Jersey's small business community can look toward a brighter and more prosperous day dawning on the horizon. Yes, we have much more work to do to end this pandemic. We have millions more vaccine shots to deliver and many more lives to protect and save. But make no mistake, we are in this fight together for the long haul. And just as no life has been expendable, no small business needs to be expendable. We rise and fall as one New Jersey, and with this new $25 million lifeline in state law, we will rise. Thank you all so much again for hosting me and for hosting us so graciously. Joanne, a particular shout out to you. Uh, it is now my pleasure to introduce a champion for Burlington County, for South Jersey, sponsor in the state, uh, state Senate. Uh, please help me welcome a friend and a great leader, Senator Don Adiego. Don? Bless you. Thank you, Governor Murphy, for uh, joining us in my home base of uh, Medford here. Um, 
I would, uh, once again, I want to request another quick shout out to an applause for uh, Joanne DiMatteo and her team over here. Uh, and her beautiful fond memories boutique. Um, COVID-19 is above all else a severe health crisis. But its economic impact has been incredibly difficult for our small business community. Micro businesses are facing unprecedented challenges through no fault of their own. Offering my support, our support, in these difficult times ensures these valuable community enterprises can continue to succeed for years to come. New Jersey never fully recovered from the Great Recession, and a lot of that was due to the limited relief residents, businesses, and organizations received. Micro businesses shouldn't have to permanently close their doors because of the pandemic. This legislation provides the assistance needed to prevent more business closures in our community. Micro businesses not only employ local residents, they also provide unique products and services that are tailor made for us. Between January of 2020 and January 2021, small business revenue decreased 24.7% in Burlington County. While we've made important strides, like our very impactful one today, our work is far from over. I want to thank Governor Murphy and Congressman Andy Kim for working with me in ensuring this vital funding is available to our residents. I look forward to continuing this crucial work with my colleagues and ensuring all your New Jersey tax dollars get where they are needed most. Thank you. I think the sun's coming out, Governor. I, I know, I know. That's true. The sun is starting to come out. Let's take the tent down before Andy speaks. No, no. <laughs> Don, thank you so much for your leadership on this and on so many other fronts. Uh, you, you've been a game changer, and bless you, and thank you. Um, so uh, Don has heard me say this before. No matter how good a job we may do in New Jersey, uh, we need uh, warriors fighting for us in Washington. Uh, and there's no better fighter than the guy I'm introducing. He is literally in there day in and day out, including lately of late pushing back on anti-Asian hate, which is despicable. Uh, but also, uh, if you saw this guy on January 6th when the Capitol was assaulted, you have a sense of his character. When you look at his role in pushing FEMA to help us open a big testing site, uh, a vaccination site in the state, uh, behind the scenes. He's been indispensable. I could, I could go through a, a long list, but I won't. Please help me welcome Congressman Andy Kim. Thank you everyone for coming around to our community here. I actually just grew up around the corner from here over in Kings Grant development. Uh, it was when I was about the age of my oldest son that we, we moved here. That was where we, as a family, were able to purchase our first home. It was a very proud moment for my parents. And, um, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. Things were pretty tight. But whenever we could, my parents would take me out to eat, bring me to some of the stores, and we would come right here. This is where I grew up. My parents would take us out to eat to some of the the restaurants here, and I felt like a king. I felt like this was so special for us to have this experience. I wandered in and out of every single one of these stores, and I'm sure I, when I was a kid, I was, I was probably causing some, some problems and fond memories, <laughs> trying to touch everything and things like that. But I tell you that because when we're providing help for our small businesses and our small business owners, this is not an act of charity. This is not like just, you know, here you go, we know you're in tough times. These are our small businesses. This is a, such a vital part to our communities. This is the, the development that helped raise me, help give me the experiences that I have, and I'm so proud that I now have a five-year-old and a three-year-old, two troublemakers that I will 
keep an eye on when I bring them into fond memories. But this is why I'm raising them here down the road from where I grew up, is because this is our home. This is our community, and we're proud of it. So today, this support that I was able to help bring and work with the governor and work with the senator and others to be able to make sure we're providing, this is for all of us. So I'm just so grateful that we have an opportunity here to try to help our small businesses. And by doing so, we are keeping our communities vibrant. We're investing in our families here and we're making us reassert ourselves into what it is that we love about New Jersey and raising our families here. So thank you, Governor. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, everybody else for joining us. I think, Joanne, my mom or dad would have kept me in the car when they went into fond <laughs> memories, but I, I don't want to quote them. Um, Andy, thank you so much for everything, including uh, great leadership uh, across the board. Um, I mentioned Charlie Bressler. Charlie and I obviously go way back, uh, but Charlie is the owner of Howard, Howard Charles. Great to have you here, man, you. representing the Main Street Alliance, and, and thank you for joining us. Let's hear it for Charlie. Thank you, thank you Governor. Thank you, Governor Murphy. Thank you, Joanne, for hosting, and it's a beautiful shop. Thank you, Senator, for remembering us in micro business and all assembled, Representative King, who I had the great fortune to speak to, who, um, like Governor Murphy and all of our representatives here, they just don't talk the talk, they're walking the walk, which is what we need. My name is Charlie Breslin, and for nearly 20 years, I've owned and operated Howard Charles Inc. We provide retail and wholesale solutions to the houseware and giftware industry, with clients ranging from family-owned businesses to publicly traded companies. I'm also here as a member of the Main Street Alliance of New Jersey, a network of small businesses across the state. As a small business owner on behalf of Main Street Alliance, I am here today to extend a sincere thanks to you, Governor Murphy, to you, Senator, for signing this critical piece of legislation. We hope it will provide much needed support for the businesses hardest hit by the pandemic. It has been a turbulent year for New Jersey small businesses. Believe it or not, very few of us included global pandemic in our business plans and we are all working very hard to just hold on. However, this bill is important because COVID-19 has not impacted all businesses equally. While a handful of well-positioned corporations have seen the revenue skyrocket and the net worth of America's billionaires has grown by a trillion dollars, I am sad to say that more small businesses have closed than ever. The pandemic has exacerbated inequalities across the board and small businesses have been hit the hardest, especially those owned by people of color, women, and other historically marginalized groups, which already have difficulty in accessing capital. In 2008, my own business barely survived the financial crisis. My business was deemed small enough to fail while funds flowed freely to large corporations and financial institutions. This bill draws an important lesson from that recovery and puts resources where they are needed and there they will speed up the recovery and include all New Jerseyans. Without this bill, we risk compounding the pre-existing inequalities with even newer inequalities. Thankfully, this bill to be signed by Governor Murphy will, direct, will directly address this very problem by targeting the smallest of New Jersey's businesses, this bill will provide help to our hardworking mainstream businesses, our mom and pop local stores who deserve the chance to weather the storm. The targeted funds allocated in this bill demonstrate that the Murphy administration, our legislature, our members of Congress understand the vital importance small businesses play in sustaining and growing New Jersey's economy. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it, and we feel your support. Thank, Thank you. you Charlie. Well done, really well done. Charlie, really well said. Thank you for everything. Das war ausgezeichnet. Last but not least, um, I mentioned him earlier. Uh, the Economic Development Authority has put a ton of money on the street for small businesses, 
And God knows we know, and I know he knows that small businesses need a lot more. And today is another step in that direction. Please help me welcome the Chief Executive Officer of the Economic Development Authority, Tim Sullivan. Thank you. Well, thank you, Governor, uh, for those kind words, but much more importantly, thank you for signing this bill. Thank you for your recognition from the beginning of this crisis that, of course, first and foremost, as the Senator said, this has been a public health crisis, but right behind it, it's been an economic crisis. And as Charlie just said, it's been one that is uh, disproportionately impacting communities of color and the smallest businesses in New Jersey. Uh, the Governor mentioned uh, nearly more than a quarter billion dollars of, of money, most of which is CARES Act money. Thank you, Congressman, uh, that EDA has been responsible for getting on the street uh, in the last year or so. More than half of those dollars have gone to businesses of five or fewer employees, like the, like the uh, $25 million that will be uh, enacted uh, today, because those are the businesses that had the fewest resources coming into this, and as Charlie just said, had, the, had uh, historic challenges accessing capital. Micro businesses and our smallest businesses um, face some of the most significant challenges in our state uh, in good times. And when, the, when a pandemic like this hits, it's all the more challenging. This is also, as, uh, as the governor mentioned, a really important part of his commitment to equity and, and, and economic justice. 90% of all uh, minority owned businesses are micro businesses in some form or fashion. So when we talk about targeting micro businesses, we're talking about targeting businesses that have historically been left out of programs like this, and that's why we've been very intentional about how we've uh, uh, set up and designed these programs. Uh, as soon as the governor signs the bill, we'll be hard at work getting ready to get this money out uh, with an application process that'll open probably in the second half of this month, give us a week or two to actually implement this. But uh, at, our, at our board meeting in April, April 14th, we'll propose the, the specifics on how this will all work and how the application process will all work, and then we'll get this money out the door, uh, you know, judiciously and thoughtfully and carefully, but uh, quickly as well, because we know that, you know, the clouds are beginning to part both today and sort of broadly metaphorically uh, with the vaccine and the, good pro the great progress, the heroic progress on the vaccine front. Uh, but this isn't over yet. We know that there's there's uh, there's more recovery to come and more more funds needed, as, as the governor said. So we're excited about this. We're humbled by the opportunity to, to pitch in and help. And uh, thank you, Senator, for your leadership and sponsoring this and to the other sponsors. And thank you, Congressman, for everything you do and for bringing home all the federal money that makes this possible. Thank you, Governor, for allocating it to us. Thank you, Thanks. Um, I mentioned that the EDA has, uh, over the past 13 months, put a lot of grant, loan, loan guarantees, other forms of capital. This bill specifically is $25 million, all grant. So this is all grant money. So this money, when it goes out the door, which is why quickly is important, but judiciously as well, when the money goes out the door, it's not coming back. There's not an obligation for it to return. And uh, Joanne, I think I could speak for you. That's the best kind of money. Charlie, the best, <laughs> the best kind of money, the one-way money that, right, that goes into you. With that, given that it is, the sun is trying to break out, but it is not necessarily getting warmer. I don't think we should let any more grass grow under our feet, Don. I'm gonna go over and sign this thing. in the Senate, Gordon Johnson, Roy Freiman, and John Amardo in the Assembly. In the synopsis, it says, makes $25 million in federal funds available to the EDA to support micro-businesses in need. And again, this is grant money. Um, let me go to the signature page, waste no more time. These are official Phil Murphy pens, by the way. <laughs> No, no counterfeit activities here today, folks. I will give uh, one money shot, if that's okay. I'll take my glasses off. Okay. Perfect. I can barely sign this thing. First pen, rightfully, goes to that one with Joanne DiMatteo, the owner of Fond Memories. Second pen rightfully goes to the lead sponsor, State Senator Don Marie Adiego, 8th Legislative District. Next up, Tim mentioned this and it's important to repeat. 
uh, this is channeling uh, federal money into small businesses, and we don't get the federal money without warriors in Congress fighting for it. Congressman Andy Kim gets in it. Huh? Hey, no fooling, it's April 1st. <laughs> Next bill goes to my lifelong friend, a guy we just heard from, just kidding, but a great leader and a small businessman himself, that man, Charlie Breslin. Charlie? And good luck with Howard Charles uh, throughout the balance of this pandemic. And last, but certainly not least, the Chief Executive Officer of the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, Tim Sullivan. With that, I'm happy and honored to say this is now, pardon me, the law of the land. Thank you all. Thank you, Robert. Don't lose us. <laughs> Great to see you, Tom. Thanks so much for helping me.